Hello mga Kakit Angels! Welcome back for another Mathinic episode. This is Teacher Mika and this is Teacher Joy Me. Today, we will learn about solving problems involving conversion of units. Before we start, kindly prepare your soft learning module, your pen, and paper to write your solutions and answers as we progress with our discussion. Also, look for a place in your home where you feel comfortable and safe. And most importantly, prepare yourself to watch and listen carefully. After going through this module, you are expected to solve problems involving conversion of units. Let's now proceed to the last part of our lesson, which is solving problems involving conversion of units. Knowledge of measurement and problem-solving strategies are necessary in solving routine and non-routine word problems. Many problems can be solved using arithmetic or algebraic processes. There are problems, however, that can be solved by simply drawing a diagram. Let's have example number one. There is a jar on the cabinet by the refrigerator. If Kiana pours 114 ounces of water into the jar, Three times to fill it, how many quarts of water does it take to fill the jar? Here is our solution. We have a given of 114 ounces of water that Kiana pours into the jar three times to fill it. That means we need to multiply 114 to 3 which is equal to 342 ounces. Since the question is how many quarts of water does it take, we need to convert 342 ounces into quarts. To convert ounces to quarts, we need the following equivalents for the conversion factors since we don't have a direct conversion of ounces to quarts. We have 8 ounces is equal to 1 cup. 2 cups is equal to 1 pint and 2 pints is equal to 1 quart. Thus, our conversion factors will be 342 ounces times 1 cup over 8 ounces times 1 pint over 2 cups times 1 quart over 2 pints. Then, we need to cancel units for ounce, cup, and pint for us to derive at our target unit which is quarts. We then multiply numbers in the numerator. 342 times 1 times 1 is equal to 342 quarts. Then we multiply numbers in the denominator. 8 times 2 times 2 is equal to 32. Now, divide 342 quarts by 32. The answer is 10.69 quarts. Therefore, it takes 10.69 quarts of water to fill the three jars. Example number 2. A tamarau calf was 2 feet and 5 inches long. Fully grown, it is 3 times as long. How long is the fully grown tamarau? First, we multiply each unit by 3. So that is 2 feet and 5 inches times 3 is equal to 6 feet and 15 inches. To convert 15 inches to feet, we multiply the inches by the conversion factor. We have 6 feet and 15 inches is equal to 6 feet plus the quantity of 15 inches times the conversion factor 1 foot is to 12 inches. We have 6 feet plus 1 foot plus 3 inches is equal to 7 feet and 3 inches. Example number 3. How much water in cubic centimeters can a cubical water tank hold if it has an edge of 3 meters? The question is asking for the volume in cubic centimeters given the edge of 3 meters. We can have two options here. First, we can solve for the volume of a cube, then convert it into cubic centimeters. The other one is we first convert it into cubic centimeter, then we take its volume. 
So let's have solution 1. The formula for the volume of a cube is side cube or edge cube. We know that the given edge is 3 meters. So we take 3 cube means 3 times 3 times 3 is equal to 27 cubic meters. Since we have a direct conversion factor for meter to centimeters, and notice that the given is in cubic meter, so we will also raise the conversion factors to cubic, canceling the unit for meter for us to derive at our target unit, which is cubic centimeter. To solve, we must follow the PEMDAS rule. Get the cube of 100, that is 1 million, then multiply it to 27. So our answer is 27 million cubic centimeter. We don't need to divide since our denominator is 1. We'll just arrive on the same answer. Solution 2. We first convert 3 meters to centimeters, that is 3 times 100 is equal to 300. Then get the volume using the formula for cube. So we have 300 centimeters cube, that means 300 times 300 times 300 is equal to 27 million cubic centimeters. Therefore, the water needed to hold a cubical water tank in cubic centimeters is 27 million cubic centimeters. Example number 4. Joel is using a bed which is 2 meters long and 1.3 meters wide. What is the size of the bed in square centimeters? Step 1. We need to find the area, and the formula for area is length times width. Substituting our values, we have 2 meters times 1.3 meters. Therefore, our area is 2.6 square meters. Next step. We need to convert 2.6 square meters into square centimeters. So we have area is equal to 2.6 square meters times the conversion factor 100 square decimeters is to 1 square meter times another conversion factor 100 square centimeters is to 1 square decimeters. So therefore our area is 26,000 square centimeters. And lastly, example number 5. A forwarding company charges 1,100 pesos for the first 20 kilograms and 60 pesos for each succeeding 2 kilograms for freight sent to Europe. How much do you need to pay for a box weighing 88 pounds? Here is our solution. Step 1. We need to convert 88 pounds first to kilograms since the other two measures are in units of kilogram for us to easily compute the charges. So we have 88 pounds times 0 0.45 kilogram over 1 pound. Canceling the units for pounds, we have 88 times 0. 4.5 kg is equal to 39.6 kg. Step number 2. We will subtract 20 kg from 39.6 kg to get the succeeding weight which is 19.6 kg. Step number 3. So 19.6 kg is the excess weight and since every 2 kilograms charges 60 pesos, we will divide 19.6 kilograms by 2 kilograms which is 9.8. Then we will multiply it by 60 pesos. So we have 588 pesos for the succeeding weight. And step number 4, since the charge for the first 20 kilograms is 1,100 pesos and the succeeding or excess weight charges 588 pesos, we will add the 2 for us to get the total charges we need to pay 
for a box weighing 88 pounds. So we have 1,688 pesos. So therefore, for 88 pounds or 39.6 kilograms of box, the company pays 1,688 pesos. Congratulations! You just finished the module 2. You can now answer what's more on page 14, what I have learned on page 15, and what I can do on page 16. That ends our lesson today. We hope you learned something. See you on our next episode, Talk Angels. Keep safe!